it's well it comes back to what we talked about earlier that 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 fragmented perception is the problem so when these specifics arise um, each time they arise it's you know th it's not the sp the thing that seems to be happening it's not the actual specific that is ever the problem it's the the whole cosmos of specifics you know is more the underlying problem that's like the root of it and so um, you know it would be like the thing like like some people would say well let's think of of a situation that that is unpleasant like um, like uh, being robbed you know most people don't think of being robbed as like a pleasant uh, experience and yet what's underneath the being robbed is this interpretation that that I have been unfairly treated I've been victimized something happened to me apart from my will something happened to me apart from what I wanted um, that there was a loss involved you know you could throw a whole bunch of things that are tied into that upset of being robbed and yet if you follow the route down you know you would find that that you couldn't even be robbed unless you believed in possessions you know it would be absolutely impossible you know to rob a being that didn't believe in possessions you know it's like ha ha took it go ahead have have all you want <laughs> you know it's like it's not mine to hold uh, so and and some of you remember that saying love does not possess you know that's what we're going for we're deepening into that heart space of of just pure love so so when you start to follow it down it's never the situation it's never the specifics that are really disturbing us it's like uh, lesson number five from the workbook I'm never upset for the reason I think uh, we're loosening our interpretations we're loosening our definitions um, and we're going deeper and deeper into an experience that that is literally invulnerable that literally cannot be harmed so it's not like we're we're learning to accept the specific situations it's more like there's a divine principle that's underneath and we're clearing away our beliefs and we're letting go of those beliefs and thoughts that are covering over our divine love our divine innocence so for me that's the the most important thing and then as you go deeper and deeper with it you know it's like um, I don't think it was too long ago when people I mean people have been asking me about perennial topics like you know sickness and death and finances and relationships and so forth and uh, lately people have been asking me about about how I s how I view relationships now and I've used these three words undefined guided collaborations that's what I see all my relationships as undefined guided collaborations I was sharing this at the monastery Barbara you you've been out there and and Suzanne said when I used the word undefined she <gasps> she just had this oh she thought to herself oh I like my relationships defined <laughs> I don't like them undefined that's ah it's really scary and then but then came the guided word like guided you know guided and then collaborations well collaborations I find are fun you know that it's that collaborative spirit all working together and this and this and this and and uh, now it's more and more it's starting to just catch on except that the ego doesn't like you know undefined guided collaborations it doesn't like undefined it likes them highly defined it doesn't like them guided you know it's like no do what you want don't forget this guidance stuff you know you don't you can do just fine without guidance and and collaboration it's like no you know conquest <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> it's not into collaboration is like win <laughs> I want you to win you know and so 
you find that it gets stirred up a bit by this, but then the more I find that I just ease into it, ease, there's such a sense of ease, there's such a sense of relaxation. The relationships become as just as easy as breathing, you know, just there's a soft rhythm to them and they're very loving and nurturing and everything. But as soon as you just define it, then it's like, uh, you cross the line. You, oh, that's it. You, you cross the line. What line? You know, who <laughs> put the line <laughs> there in the first place? It, it's really loosening that way. So, to, you know, to really es answer your question, it's, it's not so much that, um, that I accept specific circumstances, but it's more there's this underlying presence that's underneath that's another way of looking at the world. And in this other way of looking, it's a state of non-judgment. When there's no judgment, all outcomes are equally acceptable. That's where the ego goes, what? What did you say? What does that even mean? All outcomes are equally acceptable. What, what about everything I was raised with, the good and the bad? What about morality? Wait, what, what does that do to morality? It's, it's so high that it literally transcends morality. It transcends ethics. Because it's, it's peace. It's just pure, pure peace. And peace doesn't have a judgment. Peace isn't breaking the, the world apart, going, oh, a little bit of this, a little more of that. Oh, you're not quite there yet, this and this. It's like full-blown love, just total, unconditional love and acceptance. But it's acceptance of the love. It's not like condoning specific, you know, situations and saying, oh, I have to learn to, you know, oh, this is a bitter pill, but I have to learn to swallow it. You know, that, that's not the way this goes. It's more getting in touch with that perspective that's underneath it all.